Leon. Hey, hey everybody. Wow. Here we are again. Let's leave the little plastic Sazu Plas. Here for my weekly Sazu Plas report. November 6th, 2023. I'm in my backyard. I got the meaning of the ladder will be explained later. Ladder. In the ladder part of the report. I got this corny joke slinging this week. Right here. My name my neighbor's gonna get to see the Sazu Plaz report right out of her window. Uh, yeah, her birthday was uh, November fifth, which was yesterday, which is where I'm taking the readings from. Because I do that. I take the Sunday readings. It's actually Monday, about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. If you listen closely, you will hear children screaming because they're just, they're on the playground. They're getting out of school. And uh, so I can't go over there because it's school time, you know. Don't want creepy ladies coming on the school playground and filming their YouTube reports. So I'm, I'm here in my yard. But... We got some nice foliage. Uh, you know, this is my little shed where we keep our lawnmower, and it's beautiful here in New England. You know, it's it's nice. I'm here. Let me give you a little wide angle. This is my this is the, my backyard behind my house. And there's the uh, I don't know if you could see over there. See the, uh, the old Cedar Works playset that uh, that my kids used to play on. So this is where we like throw all our leaves and our uh, our pumpkins once they, you know, get all shrunken in after Halloween. We toss them in the back here because we have a, um, we have houses but it's an association. So this is all common area between us and the school so nobody can build here. So we, you know, throw all our, look at this, we throw all our stuff and uh, my husband was just showing me yesterday my gray. Let's call him gray now. In the book, he's gray. So gray, it's it's his name with the letters mixed up. He was showing me these grapevines over here and how they have wound themselves around this tree and dragged it down. And, uh, you know, he was saying, He's getting real creative now. He's got time to think. The kids have moved out of the house, except for the one in college. And he says, you know, he said, that's kind of like, it occurs to me that, you know, that's kind of like living in this, you know, current age. I won't give all his ideas away. But he did mention, you know, that that tree was growing nice and straight, and then all of a sudden all these vines start growing around it and pulling it down. You know, so it's kind of like our divisive society right now, and it's it's a dark time. If you see the world that way, you know, I'm a I'm a realist and I idealist. So, you know, I I hope for the best, but I see things. I live in the present moment. So, you know, I I look at the grapevines and I think, you know, he thinks, oh, that tree's getting torn down. And I look at it, and I think, now this is not to put down his opinion, but I look at it and I go, look at how resilient that tree is. It's, it's letting the grapevines grow around it, but it's still maintaining, it's still, it's still in the ground, and it's still connected to all the other trees. So what difference does it make if it bends a little bit, right? And that, that kind of is the message for today. You know, we get into November, in the in the liturgical year in the nature year and we start yeah you know, start getting dark we turn the clocks back here in new england and uh an hour so it's like ooh, it's getting dark early so what i love the dark i love it this is my favorite time of year i was born in the dark time of year the, the week after i was born uh 1965 you know i came home from the hospital with my mom and a couple days later, uh, November 9th, was the Great Blackout. 
across the whole northeastern U.S., you know, New York uh, into New England and north into Canada. All the lights went out in New York City. But everybody made the best of it. If you read on, on, you know, go read online about the great blackout of 65. Those of us Gen Xers who were babies at the time, right? None of us was, we were born in 65, you were an infant. You know, me, a newborn, okay? And, you know, you read and it's like, of course, New Yorkers are tough. They made the best of it, right? They said, well, you know, they had flashlights. They hunkered down, the train stopped running or whatever, but you know, they made the best of it. You know, they didn't freak out because their phones weren't working or their, you know, whatever. So, you know, people shared their food, they, they found a way. And then the next day when the lights went back on, they went home. You know, it's kind of like me. My parents, you know, here they had me, they had an electric stove and they had to heat up my bottle because mothers in those days didn't, you know, do the thing. You know, they gave you, you know, most of us kids born in the late 60s had bottles. You know, that, that whole thing. Of course, when I had my boys, that wasn't the, you know, you know, that's a whole other Zazu report. But, you know, I said, a little bit of that, and I said, the heck with that. I want my freedom. <laughs> Here's a bottle. <laughs> you know, my husband, go, go heat it up. I'm going to bed. Go to sleep. Anyway, uh, you know, because I, I don't like anybody attached to me. That is not my style at all. But, you know, we're mothers. We nurture. So we don't have to be attached to the kid, right? So there's this reading, right? It's from, like, uh, is it the one from Malachi or something? No, is it the Psalm? Oh no, Psalm. The Psalm is with Malachi was uh, Lord is King. So it's, you know, it's it's about, you know, we all have one God, right? And they say that there's the there are priests they're talking about who've turned from the way. This is quoting from Malachi. I'm not accusing any anybody of anything. It says, uh, we will. You know, it'll be go from a blessing to a curse because you've strayed from the Lord. In other words, those of you in charge of leading people, right, have led them astray. If you lead people astray and you cause division, you know, then God's going to punish you, right? In other words, you punish yourself, right? Because we all have one God. So anybody in the name of any, you know, man made, uh, you know, community uh, that claims to have the way, you know, God is saying, we're all one, right? And we should get along. Learn how to get along, each of us shining our individual light. But, you know, she's looking at me. Hi, hi. Uh, you know, but together, come together as a community, like these trees, right? Oh, she's looking at me out the window. Oh, right? There's the roots that go down into the ground. It looks like an individual tree, right? But they're all connected under the earth. So there's, you know, birches, there's oaks, there's maples, right? All different ones. Neither one of them is better than the other. There's the school bus, right? But they're all connected underground in a network of roots, right? So then we get Psalms here, right? Ah, do not busy yourself with the great things. Be simple and quiet like a weaned child in its mother's lap. So, right, think of this child, right? You know, when you're giving him a bottle, right? Put him on your lap, give him the bottle. So he's not, the, the kid isn't connected to you anymore, right? The mother, but is like, you know, an individual light unto himself, but is getting comforted by the mother, right? And so it's kind of like, you know, we're still, we're still being comforted by God, right? We're not totally abandoned, but we're, you know, we're being looked after. We're not being, you know, tossed out somewhere on the street to starve, you know? We have nourishment. We have everything we need. So, you know, 
I'm looking for an apartment. I'm, I'm out there. I haven't looked for an apartment since I was, you know, 18 years, not even, when I was in college. But it kind of just fell in my lap, you know? I was, I was thinking the other day, you know, I just met people in my classes who had apartments, you know? They were like, hey, you know, in my Spanish class, you wanna, you guys wanna take over our apartment when we graduate? And sure, you know? And that's, I never had to really work that hard. Same thing with jobs, they just fell in my lap. Like my kid, my 20 year old, that's, he's that way. So it's just a matter of finding, what, what do I need? And I sat there today, and I'm thinking, I've been going around looking at all these links for apartments and they're all the same. It doesn't matter. I said, the law of least effort is, is how I live my life. So I, so I found this place like, like five minutes away. No, no, not five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. But, you know, and it's perfect because I go, okay, what is the least amount of money, the least amount of effort, the least amount of driving, that's it. Because I don't want to spend my time driving and, you know, trying to maintain some place that's twice as expensive as I really need, right? So, simple and quiet, that's where peace comes from. Peace comes from not worrying about where your next meal or your next thing. No. Simplify, right? Quiet your mind, right? You're in God's presence. Just go lean against a tree, for God's sake. You know, for God's sake. <laughs> um, we all have a mother. It's Earth, right? We have to be here now, right? We have one, one uh, light, you know, the Christ light, which is the, you know, the Holy Spirit, the energy that fills us, that powers us, right? And God is everyone's father. So creator, source, however you think of it, we're all connected. We have everything we need, right? But, so we get to the Matthew's gospel here. So we are, okay, we've been with Matthew the whole year. And you know, they just had Matthew Perry's funeral, which is so sad. And, but it was so meaningful because they just had, you know, I looked online, they had, you know, the friends, the, his co-stars from the show, it, dressed in black, very simple, right? And he was laid to rest in a place where a lot of entertainers um, were laid to rest, you know? So it was, um, it was very, it was very sad, but it was very peaceful to watch. And so we have Matthew in Matthew's gospel, right? <sighs> Talking about scribes and the Pharisees again, the whole priest thing, right? So it doesn't mean, you know, priest, rabbi, and, you know, he said, people who call themselves, look at me, I'm a teacher with my, you know, robes and my tassels and my big hat and whatever. Okay, yeah, fine. But do you walk your talk? You know, who do you say, who do you, do you claim people should follow you? You know? Um, or are you trying to help people, you know, just by shining your light? Which is what I'm out here doing. <laughs> I'm out here offering some, just because I enjoy it. Just because, I don't know, I have to do it for myself. And if you can, you know, glean something inspiring from my words, fine. If not, fine. I'm not out to convert anybody, or I'm not just out to offer some some inspiring words. And have fun, you know? Have a few laughs. Um, and I'm constructing my own belief system, my own uh, view of the world that I can look back on and, say, and see where I've been, you know? So it's kind of like a little time capsule. But, you know, the gospel goes on. Jesus said, the greatest among you is the servant of all. Right? So, uh, the song of the week. Oh, yeah. So, oh, I want to mention it's also my, uh, my pen pal's birthday. In the book, she's, uh, I think I call her Erica Fizzle, Fizzle, Fizzleback or something like that. 
we've been, you know, we were pen pals when we were 10 in the Captain and Tennille uh, fan club. They put us together and, you know, we're still writing occasionally now. We don't email, we don't do Facebook with each other. We just kind of send cards and stuff, which is so cool. And, uh, yeah, so I wanted to mention her, and forever, so, no, forever November 6th will be her birthday, you know, in my mind, that's, because mine is the second, and I had a great birthday, um, very simple, you know, I just, I, uh, Gray took me out for a nice dinner, um, <laughs> Olive Garden, which is where we had our first date, so, uh, but, but I have to say, I wish they put the chicken giardino back on the way <laughs> because they don't have it anymore. It was this great dish. It had um, it had farfalle pasta and real chicken and nice vegetables like a like an asparagus and different veg and a nice light lemon butter wine sauce. It was so light and so good. And then of course they still had the you know breadsticks and the salad and stuff like that, just good. Um, and that's good, but I had to have this other chicken thing. It had broccoli, and I thought the chicken was going to be all nice and chopped up. Um, but it was just like two big chicken patties. Like they just shoved it in the microwave and put cheese on it. And it was tasty, you know. But, you know, and, it, and I enjoyed it. Um, but, you know, I was hankering for that. <laughs> for that, uh, for my favorite that I had you know, years ago. Uh, so I think I'm gonna figure out how to make it at home and then I can, you know, have it whenever I want. Uh, but they did give me a free dessert, which was lovely. A seven layer, like a chocolate brownie thing. And, uh, you know, it had like sh shaved chocolate on the top. So I took it home and we cut it in half and then half again and we each had a little square of it. Uh, and we had a little champagne from uh, that my uh, maid of honor from our wedding gave us in 2020 for our 25th anniversary. So we had a little, so that was nice. And uh, you know, took a walk around and looked at Halloween decorations. And I got some nice shower gel from Bath and Body Works and uh, something about clouds. It was very nice, very, very nice. I got cards, I got wishes from my boys uh, and my dad and you know, nice wishes from people. So thank you. And we have a couple, few new followers on the Zazu Plaza page. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Hope you enjoy being part of this growing community. And uh, look, look forward to new things coming all the time. New crazy ideas. <laughs> uh, you never know what's going to happen here. So uh, I feel like my neighbor's looking at me. This is why I don't usually do this. but. Anyway, I'm, I'm here. And that ladder, that, that was part of my boy's uh, Cedar Works playset. And now it's just leaning against this tree. And, you know, sometimes uh, Gray climbs on it to cut, cut bushes, cut branches and things like that. Um, so, yeah, and I had one more story I wanted to just relay before I, um, no, no. I'm good. Because we turned the clocks back an hour, um, I started thinking, you know, and it was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this weekend. Congrats to all the uh, inductees. So I was thinking, don't let the sun, sun go down on me. Uh, Elton John, so we get them all in, most of them in at once. Um, written by Elton John and Bernie Taupin. Taupin, Taupin, Taupin. And sung by Elton John, well, the version with Elton John and, and George Michael. And so Bernie Taupin and Mike, George Michael were both inducted. So I thought that would be a nice tribute for this week. Uh, the original song was sung, Elton John came out with in uh, 1974, May 20th, 1974. And Tony Tennille from Captain Tennille was on backup vocals, which I never knew. Um, and then, of course, uh, at George Michael's concert it was in uh, March of '91. Uh, he was at a concert, and he brought a, he brought out Elton John to sing the song with him. And they 
you know, they filmed it and used it for the video. And so 92, it was number one, uh, 92, I think, in the U.S. and the U.K. on the Billboard. Nominated for Grammy for Best Vocal uh, Duo, Sung Duo. And uh, so one of the one of the lines is, you know, losing everything like the sun going down on me. <laughs> it's perfect, right? Because it's like the film's four o'clock in the afternoon. It's going to be getting dark earlier and earlier. And I love it because, you know, when it starts getting light out again, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm one of those people. Um, I like it getting dark because dark is my default state. I love dark. That's why in the blackout, I was like, you know, I, I went to sleep. My parents are all running around trying to heat up. So my dad's running over to my grandmother's house trying to heat up the bottle on their gas stove. You know? and, uh, and then, so then I slept through my feeding, woke up later in the evening, took my bottle, and nothing, you know, nothing happened. Nothing did happen. Lights went out. You know, my parents were all a nervous wreck. Because, you know, anybody who's been a parent, you know what the first one nerve-wracking. Am I going to be good enough? Am I going to, you know? So you're blessed with this child, but you're, you're basically serving it, you know, till it becomes old enough to go out on its own, right? So that's kind of, um, kind of where I'm coming from today. It's like, you know, don't let the sun go down on you. Just, in other words, we fear that, don't we? Don't we fear you know, nobody noticing me, nobody seeing me, you know, at, you know, leaving the earth before we accomplish what we came here to do, you know, like uh, they say Matthew Perry, you know, he was trying to get his mother's attention, right, always trying to make her laugh, you know, and she was beautiful, he loved his mom, uh, so isn't that kind of the vibe though, you know, it's uh, all of us trying to say, look at me, you know, I'm special, I'm funny, look at me, I'm, you know, I'm the one you should listen to, I'm, I give to this, you know, that's why I don't do that, that Facebook giving thing, because I think it's a little, who, I mean, where's that money going, really, I'm like, I'd rather, you know, give the money privately to some charity, you know, or do nice things, like, for example, which I'm going to talk about now, so it's kind of like I'm being a hypocrite, but it's just a funny story. So, opportunities come every day. You don't have to wait till your birthday and get your Facebook friends to donate money to some cause to make you look good. I went for a walk. We took our dog, BB, for a walk yesterday. We're walking down the street, and there's this lady walking her, looked like she was walking two dogs, right? But she only had one of them was hers. She's like, this dog, it's like a, like a corgi, kind of long, corgi, fat kind of thing, but it had beagle ears. And she's like, this dog's been following me. She's like, I don't know where it, you know, goes. It had no leash, no collar. It slipped its collar, apparently, and got away. Then, out of nowhere, this kid, probably about 10, 11 years old, comes riding toward us on a bike. Where the, where did he come from? He's like, oh, you know, that's Milo. <laughs> he's like, he's always getting away from his, his house. He said, I know where he lives. He's down the cul-de-sac around the corner. And I said, well, how am I going to get him? I'm trying to round up his dog, you know, and like scoop him up. Or, you know, am I going to get, trying to like herd him, you know, like a sheep. This lady comes running out from the house across the way. She's got a leash. So I put the leash around him, stuck it through, you know, and we trotted down to Milo's house where we found that the, the gate had been left open. You know, it's just a little crack, which you could see that's how we got out. But it looked like the people had been doing yard work. You know, there were rakes, and but nobody answered the bell. And they had, you know, 
play set in the backyard. So obviously these people have a lot going on. They got kids, they got this dog that keeps running away. So so the kid, I said, no, here you go, you know. So the kid brought brought the dog around the back. He didn't even live in that neighborhood. He, he, he came from like the next neighborhood. So, you know, put the dog back, we closed the gate. Fine. I, you know, I have no idea. Did the people come home and did they even know he ran away? I don't know. Will I ever know? Probably not. Uh, but, you know, it was kind of satisfying. Because they're like, well, you know, <laughs> you, you, here's my good deed for the day, right? Um, if, you're, if you're aware, right? Um, and you're, you know, really in tune to what's going on you find that you're always at the right place at the right time. Maybe you can watch your neighbors making dinner four o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, you, you know, you have to take what you have and make the best out of it, you know? Um, and if, you know, I had this, I just want to, I just want to say, I had, I'm always on this Gen X page, right? Hey, Gen X Jono. Um, and, you know, last week I encountered a person on there. I don't know where she came from, but I, I was, you know, I go on there, 99% of the people, we get along, we're great, we're laughing, you know. And it was a post about sarcasm. <laughs> and this woman, not everybody gets sarcasm, you know. I mean, it's like breathing for me. So, you know, I'm saying that, and then this woman expressed in very sort of unflattering, sort of unfriendly, rude terms that she wished that I would not speak <laughs> and write, and, you know, to her. And she assumed that everybody felt the same way, and she put that up there. So I realized, okay, this woman is not worth my energy. All right, so I withdrew from that situation, took my comments back, and I vowed if I ever see that woman again, I'm not going to have anything to do with her. Because she was, I don't know, somewhere along the line, somebody was sarcastic with her, and she was hurt. All right, so it's like in the song, it's these, you know, these cuts I have, these, these wounds, right? Um, you need love to heal, right? My first instinct was, she said, oh, I was raised by my grandparents, and, you know, and so my heart went out to her. But she didn't give me a chance. Um, she just assumed that I was out to get her, you know. And that's part of, that's in the song. You know, don't shut me out because you think I'm going to hurt you, you know. She, she obviously thought that anybody who was being sarcastic was out to bully her. And that's not the case, you know. We're all friends on there, most of us. And we Gen Xers, we've got to, we're sarcastic, you know. But there's a difference between sarcasm and cynicism, you know. Um, you, you, you know, you, you don't put down somebody's dreams and, and tell them that you're going to give them the, you know, the, a certain very rude gesture, you know, and, and everybody dislikes them. You don't do that. That's not sarcasm. That's just mean. All right? So, I mean, there's a difference. Some people just don't have a sense of humor. And, you know, life's too short. But I just wanted to say, you know, if she would listen, um, you know, maybe I could have found out something about her that, may, you know, maybe we could have had some interesting conversations, but she didn't give, you know, she didn't give it a chance, and, and that's her choice, you know, people, they choose, so I just have a hard time with, you know, that I, because most, I get along with most people, and when someone is mean to me, I, um, I, I carry it around and I'm trying to get rid of that because I I'm way too sensitive sometimes. But I'm a Scorpio, so what do you what do you know? I just want to bond with every everything, you know. Scorpios want to 
latch on, you know, like a little... So, anyway. Um, oh, there's something in... a little birdie or something. Okay. So I'm going to go take a walk. And now I hear the school buses are boarding over there, so... Ah. <sighs> So that's it for this week from the from the Plaz campground back here. Until next week. Don't don't let the sun <laughs> don't uh, have a great week in the sun or the dark. Keep the keep your inner fire burning. That'll keep you warm. Till next week, Sazu Plaz signing out. Take care. Bye bye.